This is the Rodecaster Video, an entire production studio in a device that can take four camera inputs, two XLR microphones, and allows you to do things like live video switching, overlay graphics on the video, and you can connect it to your computer and even use it in Riverside for really powerful video workflows. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use it and compare it to my Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro that I've been using for the last three years and which might be the best choice for you in your studio. This is Rode's first video switcher type product coming in at $1,200, but it acts as both your video switcher and audio interface. So you are getting kind of a two-in-one deal. Inside the box, you get the Rode video switcher, a USB-C cable, and the power strip. Now on the back, you have a ton of connections, including connecting it to Ethernet so you can control it via the software. There's a place for a micro SD card for local recording, four HDMI inputs for your camera or things like an Apple TV or computer secondary display, and two HDMI outs, which you can use for things like multi-view and previewing the live shot. There's two quarter inch headphone jacks, two quarter inch speaker jacks, and two XLR ports for connecting a microphone. I'm gonna test it with the Shure SM7B in a minute. There's also multiple USB-C ports for the video out, for settings, and even a place to connect a USB-C webcam or USB microphone. Now, just to compare with the A10 Mini Pro from Blackmagic, you still have four HDMI camera inputs, but one HDMI out, which you can use for either multi-view or previewing the program feed. So the Roadcaster video gives you more flexibility there. And microphone inputs on the A10 Mini Pro, those are just eighth inch connections like a headphone jack. Not really made to connect XLR microphones on the A10 Mini Pro, whereas the Roadcaster video is made specifically for that. Obviously more USB-C connections allows for flexibility in what you're inputting and outputting, and both connect via Ethernet. I'm gonna hook this up to the four HDMI inputs I had on my A10 Mini Pro, connect that SM7B, and let's look at the settings to get this ready to record. All right, I hooked up four HDMI inputs plus an XLR to my Shure SM7B, and I've downloaded the Rodecaster app, which is what you'll need to manage all the settings in the Rodecaster video. Let's start with device configuration, and I did have a firmware update when I first turned it on. Here under video, you can change the outputs. Now, HDMI A, I have as the multi-view, which looks wild, and we'll get to that in a second. HDMI B is program, and then you can choose what USB 1 is outputting, and I've chosen program. My little circle here in the corner is actually the video output from the Rodecaster video. Let's go down to frame rate, and I do want it to be 30 frames per second, so we'll keep that there. Switching mode, you can have instant, meaning it will cut to camera two, three, or whatever you go to, or have it go studio mode, where you can have things like fades and other transitions, but I'll leave it instant. And then for recording, you can choose to record ISO. Now you can get ISO versions of the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, but we'll get into that in a second. You can also choose if you want your program quality to be normal. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of live streaming, you can stick with that, or high quality, increasing that data size and might be a little more strain on your computer. I'm gonna leave mine as normal for now. If we go over to audio, you can connect two headphones via those quarter inch jacks and you can choose what headphone style you have. And if you're gonna be doing multiple input recording into something like Logic Pro or Adobe Audition, you would wanna adjust those settings here. We're not gonna do that in depth right now because we're gonna use this with Riverside. You can also choose to output audio via HDMI if you ever use for that. Going over to system, I have mine connected via ethernet, but you can connect it to your Wi-Fi network as well. And you can also connect devices via Bluetooth with the Rodecaster video. Again, we'll skip that for now. We're mainly dealing with HDMI cameras and XLR microphones. Let's go back. And while you can set up stream profiles like a YouTube channel and other RTMP destinations, we're gonna use Riverside for that, but it is a built-in feature. Blackmagic ATM Mini Pro does that as well. And like I mentioned before, if you have multiple people in person, you can actually use auto switching. You can tell the software which microphone pertains to which guest, and then you can have it switch to that person when they start talking. You can even have a third camera angle, which is like a wide shot that has both people in frame, and when it detects audio from both microphones, it will switch to that wide shot. Let's go to audio mixer and set up our microphone. Here, there's actually a built-in delay. If you find that the video and audio don't match perfectly, it's set as a five frame delay automatically, but you can adjust that once you start recording. And if you see anything out of sync, come back here and play with that setting. And then in this dropdown, this is important. You can adjust the USB one settings and the other USB output, what everyone wearing headphones hears, your monitor out, and more. Let's go to USB one because that's what's connected to our computer and the audio that Riverside will get. I wanna have a custom mix for USB one. And here, I'm gonna bring the slider up to about 1.5 dB. Check one, two, and we're gonna test the Shure SM7B microphone with this, and I'm gonna raise it all the way up to zero. Now you can also load media into the Rodecaster video, like video clips and sounds, so you might wanna check those. But this is the important part. I'm actually going to turn down the USB inputs because I don't want my remote guests to hear themselves. That will cause an echo. So make sure in your USB one settings, your microphone is the only one up and the other USB inputs are down. 
You can also try the mix minus setting, but if your guests do hear an echo, I would come back here, change it to a custom mix, and then turn everything down except microphone one and maybe your video clips. Now that we mixed our audio, let's go to the scene builder. And here there are a lot of powerful features. If you wanna import any media like overlays, you will need to put them on a micro SD card and then import them to the Rodecaster video. I'm gonna use overlays in Riverside directly, but just so you know, you can load them here. Then I can go input by input to see what's connected, including an Apple TV here as input three and a secondary monitor for my Mac. Then you can click the gear icon separately from switching to that input and you'll see the input setting change here. If you wanted to, you can actually do keying like chroma keying with a green screen built into the video switcher here. And you can mix and match the inputs if you would like. Now let's try something with a USB camera. Now I've actually connected a Logitech Stream Cam to USB 5 and you'll see it actually popped up here in the software. Here for that button number five, I can choose the source and USB 5 is that camera. So now I can use a USB webcam along with multiple HDMI cameras and switch between all of them live. If you do want to transition, you can see the fade, dip, and wipe here, and you can change the length of that transition here at the bottom right. And then here on the top row of the Rodecaster video is where you can create custom scenes. If we look at the templates, you can have a multi-source, such as camera two being the main source and camera B being a picture-in-picture. -picture. I'll choose camera one for that smaller picture-in-picture. -picture. You can apply borders, even quickly change the size. And then that scene will be saved under letter A. Then you can switch to it here in the software or just by pressing the A button on the Rodecaster video. You can create scenes all the way up to G, different templates. You can click this arrow and look at other sources like a side-by-side. -side. You can choose media that you've uploaded as a background image then let's do input one as the left side and then camera two as the right side. So now we can be side by side, my video and my top down shot. This would be really fun to switch to if we were live streaming and we can set up all these different layouts or even create custom layouts here and then save them all to the letters. You can also create whole shows with different scenes per show, export and import those. Honestly, this is all very powerful if you're wanting to live stream with a Rodecaster video. Now I do wanna show you the multi-view. I don't think this can be customized in the software, but you do get all the inputs down here, your video inputs, including that USB-C webcam, which is right here. And you get preview of the scenes you've created, that picture-in-picture -picture scene, plus that side-by-side. -side. So you can see everything visually here on a multi-view for switching between your scenes, your inputs. And if you were recording locally to the Rodecaster video to that SD card, you get that there. And even the audio mixer, really information dense multi-view. I would recommend having a large secondary display if you're gonna be using this multi-view. But remember, if you wanted to change it, you can go from multi-view to a single camera or the program feed. And you can also have multiple displays, one showing program or a specific camera, one showing the multi-view, really flexible. Now keep in mind, you can also adjust settings and navigate the menu using the knobs by pushing them and turning them on the actual Rodecaster video. I personally find it easier to manipulate all that using the software. But let's jump into Riverside because we're ready to record. Now here in the Riverside lobby where we choose our camera, I'm gonna select this drop down, and then you'll see the Roadcaster video is right there. I'll choose that as my video input and now you'll see camera one is selected. And I'm also gonna choose the Roadcaster video for my microphone. Now you have three USB inputs you're gonna see in this menu. Go with the Roadcaster video stereo. That's gonna be that mix that we had previously. Now when it comes to the speaker, you're actually gonna connect your wired pair of headphones to the headphone out on the Rodecaster video. And you'll be able to mix that separately in the Rodecaster software. So when choosing a speaker here in Riverside, you can choose the stereo output or the chat. You're actually not gonna be listening to that mix because you're connected directly to the Rodecaster video. And here we are in the studio ready to record. If I bring over the SMB that's connected to the Rodecaster video, I see the audio levels under my name, so we're good to go. So this looks really good. Do keep in mind the Rodecaster video does not have 4K video output to your computer. So just like the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, the maximum resolution you're gonna get is 1080p. And what's great now is all my video inputs and scenes I already set up through the Rodecaster video, they'll work right here in Riverside. So I can go to camera two and that'll show up in Riverside here. I can even go to my webcam input using the software or the actual switcher. And now I have that webcam input here in Riverside as well. And even those scenes, including picture in picture, that also carries over into Riverside. So all those powerful scene and layout features using USB cameras in addition to HDMI, all of it works right here. So let's do a little recording and see what it looks like. So here I'm recording in high quality using the Rodecaster video in Riverside. I could also be live streaming to platforms like YouTube, Twitch, LinkedIn, and more. All of that is actually free to multicast to all those destinations using Riverside. I'll put a video right up here where I walk through all the steps of setting that up, how you can even manage those chats all right here in Riverside and more. 
And this Roadcaster video is going to be great for live streaming, especially with those built-in scenes. Speaking of which, let's switch between a few. So I can go to my picture-in-picture, picture, so I have my top-down camera shot. And you can see I'm small right down here in the corner. And again, what you're watching right now is the full Riverside recording. I can go to my side-by-side -side scene, also add background media through that SD card. I can go to that webcam shot, all of this being recorded in Riverside in high-quality local video and audio. And if I wanted to, of course, I can also hit the camera angles directly here on the Roadcaster video, including the scenes. And it is basically my entire studio in one. My headphones will be connected to that as well, and I'm good to go. I'll stop the recording down here. Now that we're done recording, let's head to that project. Now that it's processed, let's jump into the Riverside editor. We can edit from scratch here. Now what's great is we can edit quickly using Riverside's AI producer. If I go up here, I can remove all pauses with a click, remove filler words. If I used a built-in microphone or one of my guests did, I can apply magic audio here. And even do things like smart layouts, which will switch between me and my remote guests, whoever's speaking. And you can even adjust eye contact using AI now in Riverside. I can apply animated captions with just a click, even change the format to a vertical nine by 16. And of course I have the transcript here in the editor. And if I wanna make manual edits, I can just select text and delete for text-based editing right here in Riverside. Then I can still export up to 4K video, even though the Roadcaster video only exported 1080, because it'll put you and your guests side by side, and that final video file will be 4K. And I can also export an audio file, MP3 or WAV, and then send that to my podcast host. Overall, the Roadcaster video is an incredibly powerful machine. If you wanted an all-in-one solution that would act as your audio interface, video switcher, and allow you to do scenes like picture-in-picture -picture and side-by-side, -side, and any layout you can imagine, the Roadcaster video is an excellent option and works seamlessly with Riverside. Now, one note, if you use the auto switching for in-person guests, Riverside is only gonna record that one video feed, your program out of the Roadcaster video. And you can't choose multiple inputs in Riverside, so all microphones will be combined into a single audio track. There are some advanced setups you can do using the Roadcaster video. And if you'd like to see those, let me know down in the comments. But I'll put a video right up here that talks about using multiple in-person cameras and still getting that multi-track recording in Riverside. That link will be down in the video description as well. So which should you buy or upgrade to for your studio? Now keep in mind, the Atemini Pro Switcher is only $325, but that lacks a lot of features of the Roadcaster video. A more direct comparison might be the ISO version, which can record all video inputs directly using the video switcher, but you still don't get XLR inputs and as many scene options as the Roadcaster video. Now, if all you're wanting to do is just have a couple cameras via HDMI into a video switcher, and maybe a picture-in-picture -picture scene, but not much else, the ATEM Mini Pro can do all that. I've used this to live stream many times. It works great with Riverside. But if you wanted to use like an XLR microphone, you do need a separate interface. That's why I use the Roadcaster Pro 2. So it would be combining both of those devices. And the Roadcaster Pro 2 is about $700, this being $350. Now you're getting about the price of the Roadcaster video. So it really depends on what equipment do you already have and what are you trying to do? Are you gonna be doing way more live streaming and you want those engaging custom scenes and layouts? The Roadcaster video is probably for you. Or if you already have an audio interface or maybe you use a USB microphone and you really just want a couple cameras with the ability to do that picture in picture, like one scene, then maybe the A10 Mini Pro is a better option and save you some money. If you have a specific setup with questions and you wanna know which is best for you, let me know down in the comments. I'll advise best I can. I answer every comment here on the channel. And if you want more in-depth videos about the Roadcaster Pro 2 or the Roadcaster Duo, we have those as well. I'll put one of those right up here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. If you like more in-depth gear videos and tutorials, let me know in the comments as well. And I'll put another video right up here that YouTube thinks you'll really enjoy. Thanks for watching. We can't wait to see what you create.